I'm joined today by Steve Ruffley from Intertrader. Steve, thank you very much for joining us today. Tell us a bit about yourself and how you got interested in the financial markets. Why? I could take some time. <laughs> I guess, um, like most people, I kind of almost fell into it in a certain way. I was always interested in, in making money. And um, when you, you know you see films and that kind of stuff, you know traders make a lot of money. And I was down in Port Benus of all places. Uh, I lived in Gibraltar and I met some guys outside a bar. One, you know, rocked up in a Ferrari, and I was like, "What do you guys do?" He goes, "Well, I'm a futures trader." Oh, I was upset. So the next day, I applied for a job, and that, that was it. Really, I got involved in uh, you know trading the financial markets purely by meeting a guy in a bar, and uh, that's. That's how it started. Um, tell us about your time at, at uh, Refco and Schneider. Yeah, interesting times. I mean, uh, again, like most people, the, um, the markets have changed quite a lot and how I got involved in the markets, as I say, I met somebody and then I was introduced to the real world of trading. And the real, real world of trading is not as glamorous as people think it's. People think it's you know, on phones, shouting. When you go into a trading floor, it's actually deathly silent. A lot of guys on screens, you know, kind of very focused, very concentrated. I guess it's a lot more sophisticated compared to the you know, days of the pits and that kind of stuff. So I applied for the original, um, I guess, graduate scheme at Revco when I was lucky enough to be picked. Uh, I was in Gibraltar at the time. I came over to London for a few months. Me and the guys kind of all stayed in a big house. It's almost like the original apprentice. We had to fight it out for who got the money. And, uh, and I won, lost some money, made some money. <laughs> and it was, uh, yeah, it was just all pretty interesting. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very lucky for the way I got started. It was. Uh, an orthodox way of getting involved in the markets. But as I said, I mean, previous jobs, I dabbled, I'd uh, invested for high net worth individuals and I was sick and tired of making money for, you know, rich people and my idea was to make it for yourselves. And when, you know, you, you look at the futures world, all the money's there for you. I mean, it is, if you know how to get it, which is not that easy, but it's achievable. It's achievable. So you are the chief marketing strategist at Intertrader. Tell us what that involves. Well, as chief market strategist, I guess I'm, I'm in the face of Intertrader. So any voice they give about opinions on the markets or what you think's happening in the world, I try to be as approachable as I can. So I do webinars every week, every month. I trade non-farm payroll. But I think to date, I've probably done 1,200 webinars, 250 live trades. So I put my money where my mouth is. You know, them that can do, teach those that can't do. So I have a fund, I, I, I trade myself, and I make money from trading. You know, this is just kind of a bit of a bonus, to be honest. Everyone's got an ego. Why wouldn't you have to be interviewed? You know, it's, <laughs> it's, you know, it's quite flattering to be asked to be interviewed. You know, it's nice to write Financial Times, Bloomberg, that kind of stuff. And, I, you know, people ask my opinions because I know what I'm talking about. And, you know, I, I trade for it. I make money. Unlike, unlike a lot of people out there, they like to kind of sit on the fence. They have no skin in the game. Whereas, you know, when you speak to me, I'm out there doing it. And that's why I think Intrade is quite special because we've done this for six years. You know, we one of the first to start trading non fan payrolls live and... I've been quite lucky to, uh, you know, be supported by the managing director Shine. He's always stuck with me, and my idea has always been taken on board. And we're all really kind of focused around the customer. And it sounds a bit cheesy, but you know, if they don't make money, we don't make money. So we're quite different than the big brokers. You know, we want them to succeed.